and we're rolling. Come on. That's as good as it's gonna get. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Colin, and I still don't have a good intro for this. So anyway, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, and that's because I've been busy. Anyway, this is another sweater making tutorial. I made this cardigan right here, this emerald green moment. Mm. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make your very own cardigan. Now, if you haven't already watched my JW Anderson cardigan videos, I suggest you go watch those because this cardigan right here is largely based off of that pattern, although this is a unique pattern that I made based on that one, but that also fits like my body. So I like shortened the arms a little bit and I kind of played with the dimensions just to get what I want. And I also did this collar. And then I was lucky enough to have a wonderful neighbor who gave me these really cool vintage buttons to like sew onto it. So now this cardigan took me a little bit of a while to do. It probably took me like three months to do. It's been a long time. And I finished it just in time for it to be too warm for me to actually go outside and wear this. So if you want to learn how to spend an obnoxious amount of time making a sweater that you might not even be able to wear until next fall, this is the right video for you. So let's get into it. Okay, so first thing is first. I'm using Bernat Softy Chunky in dark green, which is a size six yarn for this entire project. Now, the entire cardigan took me 11 of these skeins. Um, each one is 100 grams, so you could do the math from there, but you'll need 11 of these to knit everything, including the body, the arms, the ribbing, the collar, and everything else. So, to show you how I did the stitches for this, the entire cardigan is made out of the B stitch, which I'll just show you here. So here I've cast on 12 stitches, and this isn't any particular piece of the cardigan, this is just for demonstration purposes, and I'm using size 10 and a half needles. So to do the B stitch, it is a four row pattern. The first row is just knit stitches. So you're gonna take your working yarn and just knit all of your, without getting the tail in, you're gonna knit all your stitches for row one. Now it's important that each piece of the cardigan that you make has an even number of stitches when you're doing the B stitch. So in this example, I cast on 12 stitches. Um, the front panels and the back panels are 38 stitches each. So anything that has an even number of stitches will work with the B stitch, otherwise you'll have to modify it. But I will just cover how to do it with an even number of stitches. So that was the first row. It's all just knit. So the second row, now you knit one, knit one, and then you knit under. So you're going to want to open up the stitch a little bit, and you're going to knit into the hole that's created right underneath that stitch. So you're going to insert your right needle in there, wrap the yarn around, back to front, pull it through, and then lift off that stitch. And then the third stitch, you just knit. So you alternate, knit, knit under, knit, knit under, and you repeat this pattern until you get to the last two stitches. No matter how many stitches you have, when you get to the last two, in row two, you're going to, you're going to knit them both. You never want to end on knitting under, otherwise your piece isn't going to look very good. Okay, so that was row two. And it doesn't look like much yet, but it's going to start to look better. So row three is the same exact thing as row one, which is just knitting all of the stitches. All right, that was row three. And now row four, the last row in our pattern, is gonna be similar to row two, except instead of ending by knitting your last two stitches, you're going to start by knitting those first two stitches. So it's knit, knit, and then knit under and then you start alternating, knit and then under. You're going to end row four on a knit stitch, so you don't have to worry about ending on a knit under stitch. And then the last one is a knit. All right, and once you've done that, that's your four row pattern, and there you have the B stitch. This I consider the 
right side and this is the wrong side, although I've seen online that this could be considered the right side. But you'll see further on when I knit the panels of my cardigan that I like this side better. So this I consider the outside of the work. Okay, so here's what I have so far for the front panel. Now this is knitted the same way as the back panel. You're gonna do 38 rows across and then you wanna knit it so that the entire length of it is about 20, 21 inches. So this is actually the front right panel. You can ignore all these tassels here because those are just for stitch markers. But this is gonna be knit the same way as the back panels. It's gonna be 38 stitches across and then knit it however tall you want it to be. Mine, I'm aiming for the total height right now to be about 20, 21 inches. So here I have the left front panel and you can see that I have some shaping for the collar here. You know, when you face it, this is the left side of the body, this is the right side of the body. So in this one, I've knit about 24 repeats of the B-stitch pattern up to this point right here where I start shaping the collar. Now, the B-stitch is a four row pattern. So 24 times of that four row pattern, that's about 96 rows. And then here I start to either knit together two stitches or cast off two stitches in order to get this collar shape. And I'll show you how to do that on the right panel. Okay, so the length that I have for this so far is about 18 inches long this way. So I know that this is the right panel, so this is where the middle of the piece is going to be. So I want to start shaping the collar this way. I also know that this is the fourth row of my B-stitch pattern, and that's important to keep note. Because as I said before, the fourth row, you're going to knit the first two, and then it's knit under, knit, knit under, knit under. So to start shaping the collar, when I have the right side facing me, I'm actually going to just knit these two loops together as one. So to work in the fourth row, we're just gonna slide the needle under both of those stitches, do a simple knit stitch, and bring that off. And then we're just gonna go through the pattern. So I know that that was the first two. So the next one, the third stitch in the fourth row, the B stitch is a knit under. And so now I'm done with that fourth row and those two stitches were just knit together. So now when you start your row one, you start of course with the wrong side, the back side of the pattern. You need to keep track of which side you're trying to shape at the beginning because at first it's not quite obvious. So this is the side I want to shape. So on the first row, I'm going to just knit all these stitches together, but then on the last two, I'm going to knit them together as one stitch. Right now we have 31. After this row, we'll have only 30 stitches on the needle. Okay, so now I got to the last two stitches on this side. So I'm just gonna slip my needle under again and knit those together to continue shaping the collar there. And now you can see we kind of have some shaping going on here. We're starting to curl in. What you can also do to start shaping it is that we are on the front side, the right side. You can actually cast off two stitches and then continue on in the pattern. So that's what I'm actually gonna do moving forward. So now that I did that, this is my third stitch, and then we know that we're on the second row. So that was a knit, under, knit. The next one I have to knit is under, and then continue on in pattern. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I only have 26 stitches left. So that means I cast off 12. So knowing that I cast off 12, that means it took me six rows to cast off this many because you're casting off two per row. So now that I'm at this point, and I'm at the same, or about the same size as my other front panel collar. I'm just going to finish casting this off and then I'll have my two front panels done. All right, now I'll show you how to knit together your two panels for the back. So here I have the two back panels, the left and the right, it doesn't really matter, just make sure that both of the patterns are facing the right way. Now this was the first panel that I made here and I made this one a bit too long because this was the first one that I made so I'm still figuring out the pattern. So instead of doing 38 stitches across, I think I did about 42. Here is the panel that I actually want the size of the cardigan to be. You can see there's quite a bit of extra space on this side. So to sew these two panels together, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of a different technique than you might be using if both of your back panels are the same size. So similar for knitting any two panels together, you're gonna take a bit of yarn. You're probably gonna take about two yards of it just so you have plenty to, knit, to sew the whole thing together. Just take off about two yards of this. And you're going to need one of these sewing knitting needles here. So I'll 
just twist up the yarn and attach it to the needle. And then it's the same as regular sewing. If you were, you know, mending a piece of clothing, you're just gonna sew these two pieces together. But for me, since I have this two extra inches, I'm actually going to sew this instead of sewing it right side to right side and just doing it right on the edge of the seam to sewing it together. I'm actually gonna overlap it by about an inch on this side and sew it kind of like this. And then when I attach the other side of that extra long panel to this to one of the front panels, I'll also do the same thing where I overlap by about an inch to get rid of those two extra inches. So to start sewing these together, I'm just gonna match up the bottom corners and I'll take this yarn, pull through, and I'll just make a simple knot around here to hold the stitching in place. Without getting too many tangles in your working yarn. Okay, so now that I have this, I am just going to tie a knot at the end here. Just double knot it. Leave a little bit of extra so that you can tuck in the tails later on. So I just leave a little bit so that you can leave it in. Not. And then you can just go and start sewing this together. Now, there's several ways you can do it. You can go in and then back out again, which I guess is like a stronger method, or you can also kind of go in loops. For me, I'm gonna go back and forth because I think it provides a little bit of a stronger stitch. And remember, I also want this about inch overlap. You might not necessarily need that in your piece. And then once you've sewn up the whole thing, the outside is gonna look something like this. Okay, so here I have the back panels sewn together already, and now I have the front panel that I wanna sew on. Now this is the top. We have the collar shaped here, kind of like the collar here. And to start, what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually start down at the bottom end side. Now I'm gonna measure 11 inches from the bottom all the way to about the halfway point. And this is because I wanna leave some of the top open on the side so I can attach my sleeve right in this hole. Right about here. And then to mark this, you can just use a binder clip like I'm using, or if you actually can find pins, that's probably a little bit more helpful. <laughs> so now that I have that middle part pinned, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that sewing needle and I'm going to attach a bit of yarn through it about twice the length that you're trying to sew together and I'm going to flip this over so that the back side and the back side are facing out so that you do right side to right side so that your seams are on the inside of the work. And you're going to take that starting corner at the bottom and I'm just going to start knitting this all together. And you want to try to get one stitch per row. So if you're going about halfway up, or let's say we're about like 96 inches, you're gonna do this about 45 times. Okay, so here I already have one of the sleeves started out. Now to do the sleeves, you actually start from the bottom with the cuff and then you work your way up. So to start out the cuff, it's gonna be 32 stitches that you cast on and I've already done the first row here. And the ribbing pattern is quite simple. It's just knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl as you go along. And if you're doing an even number of stitches like I have here, 32, it's just a one row repeat for every row. So you always start with a knit stitch. And then you're gonna bring the working yarn to the front and do a purl stitch. And 
this is just a simple ribbing. And then you bring the working yarn back and do another knit. And then you just continue in the pattern for the entire row. And then when you flip the work around, you just do the same thing. You start with the knit and go to a purl. And then you're gonna do this until you have a cup that's about two inches. Okay, so now that I have the cuff of the sleeve done, I need to find a way to get from 32 stitches to 60. And the way that I'm gonna do this is that with 32 stitches on the needle, it means I have 31 spaces in between where I can add stitches evenly throughout the stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cast on an additional 30 stitches. The method that I'm gonna be using for this is the cable cast on method. So because I only want 30, I'm first going to just knit these two stitches. And then in order to add on a stitch, instead of knitting this one, I'm gonna stick the needle through the hole in between the first and second stitch, wrap the working yarn around, pull through, and then I'm gonna put that stitch right on top. And then you've added another stitch, and then you just knit that like you would a normal stitch. Knit again. And then I add on another one. Again, in between the first and second stitch on your left needle, pull through and put that loop right on the end. And you've added another stitch. And then you knit that as well. And then you repeat this pattern going along this entire row of adding on a stitch and then knitting two until you have 62 stitches. Now adding on about twice as many stitches as you have currently is about the maximum you're going to be able to add, otherwise the ribbing is pulled too taut at the end and then it won't look very good. Don't worry if it looks like it's stretching too much now because once the sleeve curls around, it's going to look good. Okay, and once you have all 62 stitches on your needle, the next thing you're going to do is just do a single row of knits and then you can continue on starting with row one of the stitch pattern. And then once you have that one row of knit stitches done, you can start working the first row of your B-stitch pattern. And you're gonna continue in that pattern until your sleeve from the tip of the cuff all the way to the end is about 19 inches. Okay, so the next step is to attach the sleeves to the body of the cardigan. So here I have one half of the cardigan. This is the center line here. And then here is where the sleeve is going to go. So I've already, it's kind of hard to see here, but I've already sewed the bottom 11 inches of the cardigan. This is the bottom here. And then I left this part open because the sleeve is gonna be coming out of here. So I have the sleeve piece all knitted and finished. So what we're gonna do is that we wanna make sure that the right side faces the right side and that the wrong side is of course on the inside of the work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this body and we're going to fold it inside out so that the right side is facing the right side. Here's where the armhole is gonna go. And we'll do the same thing with the sleeve. And we wanna find the center point on the sleeve. So you wanna fold it in half, find the center point. And this is gonna be at the top of the cardigan. So it's really gonna just meet right here. So as long as those two points are meeting the top of the cardigan and the middle of the sleeve, you'll be good. And I'm just going to mark that and hold it together with a stitch marker because I couldn't find any pins actually. So when you have the middle of your sleeve attached to the top part of your cardigan, you're gonna start by sewing the pieces together. So I'm gonna use the tail end of the sleeve that I left out and long so I could sew it together. And I'm just gonna start at the bottom here where I've already started sewing it together. And you wanna make sure that you really start sewing the sleeve right at the bottom, right where those two pieces are sewn together, the front panel and the back panel. And it's okay if there's a little bit of overlap because you don't really want a hole in the armpit of the work. And you just keep sewing, just getting the very edge of both pieces, the sleeve and the body. Okay, so now that I got to the top of the sleeve there, I'm just gonna turn the work over and continue sewing this side together. This is the back panel here. 
this top is gonna be the shoulder. And so this is just the work turned inside out. So once I have this piece knit and sewn together right here, starting from the bottom, then the sleeve will be complete. And then I just have to sew the sleeve from a, from a flat piece into a cylinder. Okay, so now I have my sleeve done, completely sewed, and attached to the body of my cardigan. The next thing I'm going to do is sew up the shoulder seam. Now to make sure that you have the shoulder seam lined up correctly, you want to make sure that your center line, which is actually here for me, lines up about with the edge of this front panel. Now it can be a little short because I am going to be touching a button band, but generally you want it pretty close to the center line because the button band, you know, depending on how big you make it, this is only maybe like an inch or two, an inch and a half, so I'm gonna say that this looks about right to me, and then I'm just going to sew up this seam, and then we'll have most of the cardigan done from there. Okay, so now that I have the body of my cardigan pretty much complete, the front panels are sewn to the back panels, the shoulders are done, the sleeves are attached, the next thing to do is to attach the bottom ribbing, which is gonna go along the bottom so that it's not too open and kind of cinches it all together. Now to do that, I created this ribbing here, which is just a simple uh, knit pearl, knit pearl ribbing. And I actually did it in two pieces because as you can see, this piece is quite long because it's gonna fold like this and attach to the bottom of the cardigan. So I did this in two pieces. Each piece was 80 stitches. So in total, it's 160 stitches in the ribbing. And I just knitted it so that it was about two inches thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this to the bottom by sewing it in place. And the first step is that you're going to find the middle of your work by folding it in half. And attaching the middle part right to the back middle seam of your cardigan. Because you want the stretching on this to be even all the way along the body of the cardigan. So you definitely want to make sure that you set yourself up for success first before you continue moving on. And again, I'm just doing this with stitch markers because I couldn't find any safety pins or clothes pins or anything like that. So this is the best I got for right now. All right, so how, hopefully that holds it in place. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to find the edge of it and attach that on the inside on the front edge of your left to right panel. And then you'll do the same for the other side and then it would probably be a good idea to also pin it right along the edge the sides here so that you have even stretching along the banding everywhere you know using either more uh, safety pins clothes pins or in my case stitch markers just hold everything in place and then once everything is pinned probably in at least you know one two three four or five, I would say at least five places, then you can go ahead and start sewing so you make sure that you don't have your ribbing bunching up in one area and too stretched in another area. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this and then I'll come back and show you how to do the collar. Okay, so the next thing I decided to actually do was the collar. So here I have the finished collar piece that I knitted. So the way that I did this was that I cast on 66 stitches across and then I continued in pattern probably for about four or five inches. And what I'm gonna do with this collar is that I'm going to take the right side that you see here, I'm just gonna fold this thing in half the long way, and I'm going to attach it to the body of my cardigan as the collar, because this will make it nice and bulky and sturdy. And I will just do the same sewing stitch all along here, attach it to the collar area of my cardigan. Just like this. And that should make a really nice puffy and warm collar. And start by attaching it just to one side at first and then making sure, again, like with the ribbing, that it has equal stretch around the collar so that you don't get one side bunching up and one side being stretched out. You want it to look good if you put all this work into it. And so I want to make sure that my pattern is facing upwards. This is the top side on the outside. So when I fold it in half like this, I know I want this part to be the outside of the collar. The inside, it'll be upside down. 
So I totally forgot slash didn't really feel like filming how to make and attach the button band. So instead, here's a compilation of me awkwardly trying to pose with this cardigan in 80 degree weather. <laughs> If you want to see how I made the button band, go check out my J.W. Anderson Cardigan Part 3 video. And there you have it. Here is the finished product. Mm. 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 So I don't know about you guys, but I really, really love this cardigan. I love the collar that I made here. And I love how, like, chunky and, like, just amazing it is. Like, and I love wearing it with, like, black t-shirt underneath it. I feel like it looks really cool. You know, it's coming up on summer, so I won't get to wear it that often now, but I'm gonna put it away in my closet for next fall. I'm gonna forget about it. And then I'm gonna be so excited when I open up my closet again and then I see this wonderful thing that I get to wear. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. I had a lot of fun making it. It just took me a really, really, really long time to get it done, but I enjoyed the process. I think I'm going to take another little break from knitting for now, just because it's getting too hot to wear anything knit right now. But also I have a bunch of other projects up and coming on the way. So if you like this video and you want to see me try to do more things that I have no idea how to do, like this video and subscribe down below. Bye.